Cool. Okay. Um, Anupar, could you please state your name, pronouns, and the award that you are receiving? Sure. Uh, my name is Anupar Gawali. I use she, her pronouns, and I received the Martha Dugan Fellowship in Caring Labor. Perfect. Okay, cool. First question. Um, oops, I lost. Oh, there it is. <laughs> so our first prompt is to finish this sentence. The labor movement and fighting for working people is important to me because. Um, the labor movement and fighting for working people is important to me because I know that my own well-being is dependent on the well-being of working class communities. Uh, it's interconnected. And um, by living in the neighborhoods that I do and that I've lived in before, um, the services that I use, the work that I do, the way in which I get to do that work, um, and the rights that I have as a worker, all of that is possible because of current and past and future organizers and advocates whose time and effort and attention have gone towards fighting for different conditions and policies. Um, yeah, working people, I think working people are not just an abstract tax bracket or community and um, they're people in our homes, they're our families, uh, ourselves and I know that I don't exist alone and that the things that bring me joy and safety um, are not things that I created in isolation or that appeared out of thin air, but that many working folks in our community deserve, deserve to thrive and, and feel safe in community rather than struggle in isolation um, and shouldn't feel trapped like they need to live their life working in systems that are not actively harming them. And um, it's really important to strive towards. That was perfect. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, so question two is what issues in labor and social justice are most important to you and why? Um, so labor, I think with labor and social justice, uh, there's an opportunity to bring a class-based analysis, of course, to the different issues that comprise well-being and health for your communities. Uh, I'm personally really interested in understanding and uplifting narratives of different communities who have been historically and intentionally left out of labor and social justice conversations. Um, this includes domestic workers, workers of varying immigration status uh, as two examples. Um, the, I think the communities who comprise the labor movement and who provide a lot of caring labor specifically, they speak different languages, they hold queer identities, they're um, existing in intergenerational and international communities. Um, there's a lot there. And I think that for me, it's really important to work really hard to explore how different policies and programs that we um, exist in don't just leave room for these different types of identities and people, um, but are actually like led by them. And different communities may have like really specific issue areas that are, uh, or like goals that are really specific um, for them that on the surface might feel really separate or unrelated from one another, but I think that there are really important lessons to learn from how those different communities um, within the labor movement are working together uh, and are showing really actionable, concrete solidarity um, and not just saying like, I support you, great job, but are actually strategizing together um, and showing up for one another and using their individual platforms uh, and memberships to strengthen across different imposed categories or borders. Um, I think labor movements give us an opportunity to have 
conversations about a lot of overlapping struggles. And it's definitely complicated, uh, but important that we're constantly expanding the boundaries of who we're talking about and who we decide can be uh, included and accommodated um, and take those decisions really seriously. Um, I think there's communities out there right now who are already showing us how to organize across identities and categories um, and how to build bridges. I think uh, for me specifically, I've learned a lot about, um, about this from how the immigration justice and workers' rights movements, for example, are, um, are showing us how we don't have to see them as separate fights. And um, they're actually really strong when they're connected. So it's important to pay attention to that cross movement organizing. And I think it could unlock a lot of um, really important solutions for different systems and different realities that are possible. Thank you, that was fire. I totally agree with you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, and our very last question, so almost through with all of them, is what do you hope to accomplish with the funding from the Martha H. Dugan Fellowship in Caring Labor? And what will the Dugan Fellowship allow you to do? Yeah, so um, the funding from the Dugan Fellowship will allow me to continue my training to become a social worker and public health practitioner. Um, and my goals uh, for both of those have have always been to contribute back to my community um, that has cared for me in many ways and that I hope to care for uh, in different ways going forward. Um, so much of my own understanding of power building and organizing came from my time with Abhikar. Um, so I want to uh, think about ways to support um, them, their worker center and community center in Queens. And that's definitely a space that I want to continue to support. Um, and especially after working at the community level and now being in an academic space, I know that there are really clear limits to training in an academic space and, and learning that's packaged and delivered by academia. So, and especially without accountability to people and community, I think that large institutions, even with really good intentions, can be the direct opposite of caring. So with the support of this fellowship, I want to continue in the next year to learn um, different ways of interrogating um, those structures. And then personally, uh, as a social worker, continue to learn different therapy techniques, um, better understand the systems that um, make up direct service, and also um, in Seattle and in different parts of Washington. Uh, equip myself with those clinical and, and research skill sets, and then ultimately connect back to how different stakeholders um, can be involved in creating more caring communities. Awesome. Thank you so much. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording. Yes, claps. <laughs>